prisms in the indirect ophthalmoscope reduces the effective pupillary distance by about one fourth and brings it to somewhere around 15 mm so that it passes through the condensing lens into the patient's eye. Before we move to the higher grade, that is confusing terms of optics of indirect ophthalmoscopy, let us go back to our uh, pre-MBBS days where we need to know certain terms. Here I have taken into account only a convex lens because that is what we use mostly in indirect ophthalmoscopy. It consists of an optical center. There is a principal axis that is a light ray which passes through this center and it passes out of the lens unrefracted. When parallel rays of light pass through different points on the optical axis of the lens, they are deviated to a point which is known as the principal focus. This is the word I'll be using more and more in the subsequent slides. So principal focus is nothing but an imaginary point where all the light rays which are incident through a lens are brought to a focus by simultaneous refraction. Hmm. So it depends on the patient's pupil size, power of the condensing lens, overall size of the condensing lens. The relation of these lenses will be discussed in the subsequent presentation by Vrishali. I will mainly focus on the refractive error of the patient's eye and the distance the condensing lens is held from the patient's eye. So in a patient who is emetrope, hypermetrope, and myope, the field of view is not the same. Compared to an emetrope, if the condensing lens is had at the same distance from the anterior surface of the cornea, the field of view is smaller in a hypermetrope because of smaller size of the eyeball, whereas for the same distance, the field of view in a myope is larger because of the larger size of the eyeball. In an emetrope, the emergent rays are parallel, and hence they are brought to a focus at the principal focus of the lens itself. Recollect, principal focus is that point where all the rays converge together at a point system. In a hypermetrope, the emergent rays from the patient's eye are divergent, so they are focused farther away from the principal focus of the convex lens. In a myope, the emerging rays are convergent, so they are brought to a focus near to the lens than its principal focus. I know this all is getting confusing to who are not accustomed to the optics, but what you need to remember is just simple three practical points in terms of exam as well as day-to-day -day application. In an emetropic eye, the image is at the principal focus. In a hypermetropic eye, it is farther away than the principal focus. And in a myopic eye, it is nearer than the principal focus. Simple three things to be remembered. So in in different refractive states. So here, the small f is the principal focus of the lens, and the capital F is the anterior focal point of the eye. In an emetropic eye, if you move the lens somewhat towards the examiner, uh, towards the patient, or away from the patient within the permitted range, the image size will not alter significantly. In a myope, if you move the lens towards the patient's eye, the field of view will reduce, but the magnification will increase, which will be discussed in detail in the subsequent presentation. So in a myope, if you want to get a whole view of the fundus, you need to move the lens towards you. But if you want to get a greater magnification of a smaller view of the fundus, you need to move the lens towards the patient. The reverse applies for hypermetrope. If you move the lens towards the patient, the field of view will increase, but the uh, field of view will decrease and the magnification will increase and vice versa. So now, Basically, the image formed is real because it exists in the aerial space between the condensing lens and the observer, that is the ophthalmologist. It is inverted, that is up will appear down, and it is laterally inverted, that is medial will appear lateral and lateral will appear medial. So you need to know this and have practice to reorient the details in your brain or while drawing the fundus diagram preoperatively. So that will take subsequent practice. Secondly, image magnification depends on the lens power, position of the lens in relation to the eyeball, which are important, but equally important is the refractive error of the examiner as well as the patient. So let's move to the instrumentation. Next. <clears throat> 